Since the 1970s, our school mascot has been the Crusaders. Many people today have a strong negative opinion about the Crusades, but it is an opinion formed with access to almost no facts. The gap between the historical reality and common opinion is so great that some professional historians have given up trying to close it. As Catholics, especially having taken the name Crusaders for our school and athletic program, it is important that we understand this era of our history. As modern Catholics, we should not be embarrassed by the medieval Crusades. In their age, and at their best, they were errands of mercy to right terrible wrongs. For medieval men and women, the Crusade was an act of piety, charity, and love, as well as a means of defending their world, their culture, and their way of life. Learning about the Crusades can also provide lessons for our parish's participation in sports as students, coaches, and parents. There is much we can learn from those cruce signati, or those signed with the cross. The Crusades occurred during the Middle Ages in Europe, during 1095 to 1291 AD, about 700 to 900 years ago. At that time, Christianity had spread from its beginnings in Israel to all of Europe. While Europe was almost entirely Roman Catholic, the Christians living in the Holy Land had been troubled by 400 years of enemy conquests, already losing about two-thirds of their lands. Those invaders did not share the Christian faith, but were of the Islamic or Muslim religion. Mohammed, the founder of the Islamic religion, at the end of his life instructed his followers to fight all men until they say there is no God but Allah. Mohammed's teachings on building a community united in political and military purpose oriented Islam toward its imperialistic expansion. While the Muslim world was united in language and religion, it was broken into regional centers of power, Sunni and Shiite. Muslim armies had captured all the Christian areas surrounding the Holy Land and into North Africa by the year 700 AD. Initially, there was no response from the Christian world. From 1009 to 1021 AD, Christians and Jews were persecuted by the Egyptian Fatimid Muslims, not being allowed to show crosses publicly, use wine for the celebration of the Eucharist, and forced to witness the destruction of the Church of the Holy Sepulchre, the place of Jesus' empty tomb. Soon after, a new group of Muslims, the Seljuk Turks, arrived and destroyed Christian churches, murdered priests, and seized pilgrims traveling to the holy sites. For example, in 1065 AD, a group of 12,000 pilgrims were massacred by the Turks on Good Friday, only two days from reaching Jerusalem. The Christians of the East, part of the Byzantine Empire, tried to defend themselves, but after their bitter defeat at the Battle of Manzikert in 1071, the Turks established themselves in the city of Nicaea, within striking distance of the Byzantine capital at Constantinople. The Byzantine Emperor sent word to the Pope. Unable to do anything to defend themselves, the Byzantine Christians of the East turned to the Roman Catholics of the West for help. Blessed Pope Urban II gave a speech at the Council of Clermont in 1095 AD that changed the world. Pope Urban spoke of the liberation of the holy city of Jerusalem, the violent activities of the Turks, and gave the exhortation to take up arms and defend their brothers and sisters in the Holy Land. This was the call for a crusade. Urban also offered the spiritual incentive of a plenary indulgence, which provided the main motivator for those who undertook the journey. To understand why a plenary indulgence was such a motivating factor, we need to remember what indulgences are. Perhaps not talked about as much today, indulgences are still an important part of our Catholic faith. 